slide, please. You know, the purpose of our call today is really to talk about um, what we're experiencing here in these unprecedented times. And um, it, with any kind of disaster, um, the, the statistics are telling us that 80% of companies never do not recover from the disaster and are, are likely to go out of business within one month. 51% of all of our companies uh, that experience the disaster, um, they close within two years. 75% of businesses without a business continuity plan fail within the first three years of the disaster. And 43% of our businesses never reopen. So that is a sobering, statistics for what we're experiencing today in our in our economy. And um, so we want to address how do we help our companies come back strong uh, when we do reopen or if you're experiencing a delayed reopening after after the shutdown. Next slide please. So don't forget that um, our services that we offer at the SBDC encompasses all these areas, which I like to call, this is my business wheel. Um, any business that is operating these days have departments in all these um, areas from legal, human resources, to operations, technology, marketing and sales, and accounting and finance. Now, let me go back to, everybody has a department. And I know in some small businesses, our entrepreneurs we wear many hats. We may have, we may be the department of all these areas. But you know, as an entrepreneur, when I owned my own business in Denver, Colorado, when I first started off, and I was a small business uh, with only a employee of one. Um, I knew a little bit about all these areas. Now, my background is accounting and finance. Uh, and I'm very strong in that area, but I know a little bit about all these areas that we are um, seeing there on the business wheel. And I would hope, and I do coach most of my entrepreneurs on these areas so that they know when they need technical assistance or, or more an expert assistance in these areas, they have uh, the confidence that they can reach out to other people in the in our market, rather than be an attorney or an HR consultant, or maybe even a CPA to ask for help in these areas. Next slide, please. So before I turn it over to Ms. Melissa, who is our guest speaker today, uh, here's my contact information. Our phone number for the callers today is 318-678-6142. And if you would like to email us, it would be Dana Cawthon at lsbdc.org. And so without me uh, going forward, I'd like to introduce Ms. Melissa. Melissa, I met Melissa at a uh, America's Small Business Development Center Conference in um, San Francisco, wasn't it, Melissa? Uh, Long Beach, California, yeah. Yeah, I was in, oh, Long Beach, yes, I forgot it. Uh, you were actually doing a uh, seminar on marketing and marketing tips, and I was very impressed with um, your knowledge and expertise. And I wanted to invite you out today so that um, we can capitalize on this smart and responsible marketing during the COVID-19 uh, presentation that you have. And I noticed that on your Facebook page, you're just almost finishing up a course. So uh, actually it was a free course uh, that people could attend. Can you tell me a little bit more about that before you get started on your presentation? Yeah, well, all, all month I've been talking about marketing strategy because I think it's so important uh, for us to be looking at that right now. And so in this presentation, we're going to take a closer look at um, what smart marketing actually looks like. And then at the end, I'll tell you about um, uh, something that I'm working on. I have a basically a, sort of a virtual summit webinar week that's coming up 
uh, that I'd love for all of you to join in on because there's going to be a lot of really good speakers. It'll be a, it'll be a free event and um, there's going to be a lot of different ways of talking about recovery. But I know that, um, you know, I, I had an opportunity to speak with um, Dana and Duran and Dee yesterday about what's happening for you in Louisiana and where you all are in this process. And I know that maybe not everybody is quite in recovery mode yet. So today we're going to look at sort of the bridge between those areas, this idea of what marketing looks like right now. Um, so thank you for that uh, introduction, Dana. And uh, let me start by introducing myself. Um, I started out in my career doing major international sport events. So that means I did Olympic Winter Games and Rugby World Cup. Um, I worked with the US Olympic Committee for a couple of years. So I cut my teeth on the biggest brands, the biggest events in the world. And I learned a lot about how brands like that operate, how uh, integrated and long-term their marketing plan is. And when I started my own business eight years ago, I had to figure out how to adapt all those really good principles of marketing in a way that would work for my small business and in a way that would work for my clients' small businesses. So. I, I try to think about marketing from a practical level. And right now, I think that's more important than it's ever been. I mean, I think we really need to have our eyes open and I think we need to be very aware of what's happening around us to be successful during this time. So that's what I bring into this presentation. And I, and I hope that helps you sort of ground yourself in where I'm, where I'm coming from when I talk about smart and responsible marketing during COVID-19. Um, I should say that I am actually based in Seattle, so I'm on a slightly different timeline than than uh, Louisiana is in terms of how we've seen this wave roll through. Um, and so I can bring a little bit of knowledge in sort of how our earlier timeline has worked, but there have also been things about it that have put us at a disadvantage um, that may be an advantage for you in your state. So. Uh, you know, nobody quite has a roadmap for how to deliver material like this. And today we'll do our best to try to answer questions and get everybody thinking about marketing. A few quick housekeeping rules that I wanted to put out there. Um, if you have anything that's distracting you in the background, this is a good time to shut it off or to silence it. That might be your phone, that might be your messaging device. I also actually encourage you um, the way that I formatted this presentation, I've split it into sections and there's time for questions at the end of each. So I would suggest that we all uh, put ourselves on mute until those times so that nothing, uh, no sounds distract the group during the presentation itself. I am gonna be looking at the chat very actively. There are gonna be times when I ask you questions and that's a great place for us all to answer at once without crowding each other. And then when we get to those, uh, those breaks between sections, that's a good time for you to ask questions about your business because ultimately what I wanted to do with this presentation was create a framework to think about marketing that would lead to questions. Um, so we're gonna prioritize the Q&A piece of this as much as we can right now. So just to lay a foundation for what we're doing here, um, and this is the key thing that I wanna get across, marketing is something you need to be doing right now. Even if it feels like there are so many things that are more urgently needed, that are more pressing, that are more financially tied to your business that need to be looked at right now. At the end of the day, marketing is just making sure people know who you are. They, that they know that your business is there, they know what you do, and they have a reason to pay attention to your messages. That is what marketing is. And at the end of the day, it leads to sales. So if you want sales for your business long term, you have to do marketing. And the truth is, you know, if you don't have sales, then you aren't able to meet those those uh, deadlines or, or pay those employees or, you know, all those things that you're concerned about now if you don't think about marketing at the same time, eventually you're not gonna be able to take care of those things. So I really wanna root us in this idea that marketing is something that we need to find a way to do. We need to find a way to do it right now. Um, and your means to do it may be changing and the landscape is certainly changing, but it's something we need to look at. So like I said, marketing isn't optional. It's, it's basically pivotal if you wanna have a business, not a hobby. 
So if you're looking to generate revenue in your business, people have to find out that you exist and they have to continue to know that you exist. And, and truly there's so many distractions right now. There's so people's lives are shifting so much that they don't, they don't naturally have time to think about your business unless you tell them it's still there and you give them a reason to think about it in their day. So marketing is as important as it's ever been, maybe even more so right now. Like I said, the landscape is changing. So what we're trying to do in this presentation is just get a grip on what that means, what that could potentially look like for your business and some of the basics of how to handle that. And then as we go through with questions, if you wanna ask specific questions about your business, you can do that. And here's how we'll do it. So this is, I, I mentioned up front that there were gonna be four sections of content. This is what they are. So we're gonna look first at how your target market is changing. Then we're going to talk a bit about how to pivot your business. Then we're going to look at this idea of finding an appropriate tone, which is so hard to do right now. And it's like an ever shifting thing that we have to be aware of. And then lastly, we're going to look at providing assurance in your marketing. Normally when I do presentations, I deliver all the content up front and then I leave time for questions. For this one, I would really like to take questions at the end of each section in case it inspires you. Any of these sections might inspire you with a question about your business. All right, so that's how we're looking to do it today. Let's go ahead, let's talk about smart and responsible marketing during COVID-19. And I actually wanted to start with a question for you because I think it's really important that we have a sense of who is here right now and who's listening in. So I wanna ask you a question and have you type your answer into the chat so we can all see it. Um, if you haven't had an opportunity to look at the chat yet, um, you, you know, if you look at the control panel on your end, you should be able to see that chat button that'll open up a window. And I see a bunch of you have already found it, that's great. So the question is what industry is your business in? Got a couple answers coming in already. We've got small business development. We've got finance or accounting. We've got restaurants already. We're seeing a big spread here. Um, nonprofit. Whoa. Okay. We, so we definitely got a nice range. Um, awesome. Economic development. So definitely seeing a lot more service businesses here so far. Radio. Okay, this is great. This is great. Thank you for jumping in with all these answers. It's really helpful to see what everybody is bringing into this. It helps me get a better sense of what's going on. So I'm definitely seeing a lot more service businesses on so far. If you uh, haven't had a chance yet to write in, please feel free to do that. Consulting. I hear you. I am in the same boat as you. IT. The, probably IT has, a, there's a lot of clients that need our, your help right now, I'm guessing. Awesome. So it's really interesting because I am definitely seeing a, a predominant uh, percentage of you in service businesses more so than product businesses. That definitely helps me get an idea of what's going on and what you need. Thank you for that. So that was just a chance for us to get a sense of who's on with us right now and may help me uh, shape how I deliver this material as we go. Um, now, Let's look at the piece about how your target market is changing. And obviously, because everybody has a very different business that they're in, different industry that you're in, everybody's target market is going to change a little bit differently. Your options for pivoting are going to be different. So I'm going to just present this in a way that's a little bit more general, and then you can ask questions that ground you in your own business as we go. Let me put a definition behind target market so that we all know what that is. Your target market is basically just the people who would be most likely to be interested in your product, your service, your program, or your idea. Whatever it is you're selling, these are the people who would be most likely to buy it. Now, defining your target market with as much specificity as possible is critical for a successful business. And this is something that on a normal day, this is the kind of work that I often do with clients where we really look at you know, all the different types of clients that you potentially are trying to target and flush them out as much as you can. We do a lot of work around uh, creating avatars or you know, getting really dialing each person down specifically so that you know exactly what you need to say to them and how to reach them. Um, that is work that on any ordinary day is work that I would suggest you do. Right now, we're heightening this a bit because the specifics may be changing a little bit. 
if you've done that kind of work before and you've asked yourself, who are the people that you're trying to reach? Some of those specifics may be shifting a little bit. Um, and, and this is something that we do our very best to get a handle on. When I say being specific about your target market, you know, for example, I generally reach small businesses, but that it's not really enough for me to say that. Because if I deliver a presentation um, in Hawaii versus in a rural area versus in a metropolitan area, I'm going to be speaking a little bit differently, using different examples, often local examples. So even the location matters for me very often. Um, the type of industry people are in, you know, I asked you up front what industries you're in because that's information that's relevant to me. So for me just to say small business is my target market isn't specific enough for most situations where I need to be speaking to a group of people. And it's the same for your business. You probably have really specific groups that you're reaching. And the point is right now, they don't even really know what they're doing and what their behavior is. We're all redefining what our behavior is right now. So because your target market's behavior is changing, you have to reassess them in this moment and make sure that you're still being appropriate and actually reaching them with your message. So having said that, there are a few areas that could be changing, and I'm gonna start with the most obvious one first. People are staying at home now. Yes, they're staying at home more often. They're, they're staying local. They're not shifting location. Maybe in some cases, people moved before they had to stay at home so that they could shelter in place with people that they know. Um, if they go out, they're going out for much shorter periods of time or in much smaller groups or just by themselves. And then of course, if your business is tied to travel, which it looks like most of yours are not exactly tied to travel you know we're we're watching that there was a ramp down of international travel and then there's been a ramp down of domestic, of domestic travel so location wise and this is absolutely something that we look at from a target market standpoint your target market is now physically in a different place than they often are if you would normally reach them with your marketing in a certain location now you kind of have to reach them at home you have to hit them where they are if you want to get in front of them at all that was the more obvious one. Now we've got the package of lifestyle changes, right? This is this is kind of an interesting one and, and one that um, a lot of businesses are having to think about how to pivot with this. Your audience is now seeking more experiences. In some cases, people have more time than they used to and they're looking for ways to stay distracted and fill that time. For those people, they are looking for experiences. For others, they're looking to do what they were doing before, but do it virtually. For some, they're looking for ways to try to get out and about to be able to maintain their mental health, to be able to you know, be extro their extroverted selves, to be able to get the things done that they need to do, but they're looking to have no contact. So it's completely changing um, you know, the way we get food, the way we, you know, for the restaurant industry, and I know somebody is in that industry, it has shifted things quite a lot. I'm also seeing that spending habits are variable right now and it, they're not all the same. For some people right now, this is a time of really buckling down and being careful with their spending habits, um, spending less, being tight with their finances. But for some people, this is going in the opposite direction. In Seattle, we saw that there was a boost in sales for some of the luxury products early on at least in the uh in in staying at home and the new policies that we put in place because people who did have money to spend were looking for things to do and it was creating some impulse buys so spending habits may not look the same across all the different industries that you represent and this is something that you really have to hone in on the last thing that i want to point out here and to me this is the most complex because this is what's shifting a lot, is emotional state. Every state is on a different timeline right now of how it locks down, of what policies are in place, what people are allowed to do, how much of a concern there is for COVID-19 itself. So the timeline of what physical distancing actually looks like is very different from state to state. And with that comes people coping with that change emotionally in waves. 
Um, people are dealing with change, they're dealing with grief, they're dealing with uncertainty. People have fight, flight, or freeze responses. Um, people deal with these things in different stages at different times. And it's really important for your business because I want you to continue marketing in this process. And I want you to continue to find a way to get your message out there. The question becomes, how can you do that in a way that is truly responsive to what people are feeling right now? The more information that you can have, the more your eyes can be open to what's around you and perceiving how people are dealing with this time that you're in, the better off you will be in having a message that comes across. Uh, we, we don't want to be tone deaf. We want to lean into what people are really feeling right now to be respectful of that and to find the message that's appropriate. So I'm going to talk with you about tone in more detail a little bit later. Those are the absolute basics right now with target market. And I know I'm, I'm keeping this as a broad overview because we have very different industries represented here. So I want to open this part up to questions. When you think about your target market for your specific business, how is it changing? And it could be that you either, you know, maybe you type into the chat a statement about how it's changing and something that you need to be aware of. Maybe you're looking at um, the lifestyle component or the emotional component more so. If you have a question that's specific to your business, I'd love for you to, um, to jump in and ask that. And we can take a look at that before we move on to the next section. See if anybody has questions about this as we go. Awesome. And I'd like to open this back up to Dana too, if you have anything that you wanna add on the subject of target markets and this idea of um, who you're trying to reach and, and how we identify how those people are changing right now. All right. Okay, we have something from Patrick here. Mine's been more real retail-based with the SBA apps for non-traditional clients for me. Okay. That's a good point. So you're already seeing a different way, method of delivery for the types of offerings. My client is also finding themselves without less work. That and uh, April looks like you're in consulting and I, I hear you. Um, and that is, that becomes a really interesting thing too from a service angle because you have to kind of make decisions about how you're going to show up and what you're going to offer and what's going to change about that. Um, it's something that I'll talk a little bit about later um, in terms of the policies that we come up with because we have to be very respectful but also maintain the fact that we have a business. So that is a really interesting challenge that many of us are facing right now from a consulting standpoint it's really really feels difficult to get that much awareness and what uh what's happening for your clients and then continue to operate your business on top of that you get really good points there so um i definitely appreciate your thoughts on that um feel free to type in if we have a you know another minute or so if you have any other uh, thoughts or questions you want to type in and if not we will head on to the next section to talk about pivoting you have to know your target market before you can pivot. Um, so this, this is really a place where it's so important we wrap our brains around this part first, and then we talk about how to make the changes that we need to make. All right, it looks like that uh, we've got the questions that, that needed to come in. So let's talk a little bit about something more technical here, the pivoting aspect. We're hearing this word a lot right now. The word pivoting is coming up a whole bunch, and it's because Many of us cannot operate our businesses exactly the way that we were before. There are a lot of things that could potentially be shifting. And again, this is about being responsive to the time that we're in and making sure that when you put your message out there as a business, when you let people know that you're still there and, and what you're offering, that we're doing it in a way that actually matches what needs to happen right now. So the idea here is that, you know, we, we said up front, your target market may be shifting. Well, if they're shifting, your message can't stay exactly the same 
or maybe it can stay the same, but it needs to go somewhere else. Something about what you're doing probably has to shift to match the way your target market is shifting. So it's this idea, and I really drew from the picture here, that if your target market is shifting, you have to change what you're saying to. You have to change you know, where you're pointing that arrow to hit the target. So what can pivot? I wanna take a look at this with you. There are a lot of things that potentially could pivot. And this is something that depending on your business, you can decide what's the most appropriate thing. And this may be something that you have questions about. So cue those questions up as you think about what, what you wanna ask specific to your business at the end of this section. One of the things that can obviously pivot is your offerings. And we've certainly seen in Seattle, we've seen a lot of businesses that have needed to shift this. Um, and, you know, even, um, you know, we've seen some, for example, restaurants that have shifted from fine dining to serving walk up burgers and bagels because they knew that's what people needed and they weren't going to sit down in their restaurant. So actually, actually looking at your offerings themselves and saying, is the thing that I typically sell needed right now? And if it is not, in what way can you shift it so it is relevant in this moment? And knowing that, you know, we all hope that this is a temporary situation and nobody's expecting you to lock into that forever. There will be an exit strategy that you need to have from whatever you're pivoting to. But this idea that the thing that you're selling has to be relevant if it's going to be sold at all. So offerings are certainly one of the things that you could potentially be pivoting right now. And I also want to add to that um, this idea of packages. It might be that your offerings just need to be packaged differently or combined in a certain way that makes them more relevant. So it's something to think about. Now, the other thing that you could be looking at is that maybe it's not so much that you are changing what all of your offerings are as much as stripping away what's not needed and focusing only on one or two things. You know, it might be that this is a time when from an operational standpoint, it's better for your inventory or it's better for your operations to be able to only have one thing that you're focusing on that you're delivering. And if that's the case, that's where all your energy goes for marketing, because that's the thing that you're going to be able to deliver and sell long term. So as I talk about things that can pivot, you're going to hear that I'm sort of shifting between operations and marketing quite a lot because right now those things are very tied together. Um, what's relevant to the audience also has to be something that can be profitable for you um, because otherwise your business won't be sustainable during this time. So you, know, you make decisions about what you need uh, from a profit loss standpoint, from a cash flow standpoint, and then you make sure that that message ties in from a marketing standpoint. So the offerings piece is the one that I wanted to look at first, because this is this is a really foundational element that, um, you know, all of your marketing comes from this place. Now, we've also got and I'm going to sort of swing back to the bottom there operations themselves. Um, this piece is not necessarily just marketing related, but I did want to highlight that this is really something that um, you know, the operational piece is something that's going to look a little different for all of your businesses. It may change how your team functions. It may change how you're able to deliver some of these pieces. Um, you know, I know we have somebody in IT who is listening in, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of uptake and a need for people to be uh, delivering things virtually and needing to have the capacity and the function, uh, you know, the structure in place to do that. So, Offerings is the first tier, but operations ties in with that. Now, if I keep going across the bottom there, audience, we talked about it a little bit up front with the target market piece. Your audience might need to shift. I'm not saying that it definitely should, but depending on what your business is, if you know for sure that your audience is not going to spend money on the thing that you sell and there's no way to, to change the thing that you sell, is there another audience that is right for that at the moment? Um, I, uh, as an example, somebody that I've, I've worked with, um, they're in the fashion industry and the type of people they need to sell to right now is shifting quite a lot. They don't necessarily need to sell exactly what they were selling before to the same people. They're finding new audiences of people who need 
different like different types of medical wear and, and things like that. So audience is something that potentially could shift if you find that you can't change what your offerings are. They have a certain function in a certain place in the world. And now you just need to reach a different group of people who do have the bandwidth for you right now. That is something that you need to really assess and figure out how you're going to shift into that space. Now, it could be that your audience stays the same and what changes is where you're going to market. Because now, as we've already kind of looked at in the first section, they might very well be in a different location from what they were in before. You might be able to go from, you know, it might be that you used to be able to reach them in a certain physical place and now you have to reach them virtually at, at their home. So the question becomes, how do you assess, okay, you've got the same audience. All right, where are they now? So that when you go to market, you are able to get that message in front of them. Now, another thing that might change going up is the messaging. With the messaging, what we're saying here is, look, my offerings are fine. My audience is fine. I, you know, I can figure out how to get in front of them, but what I'm saying may need to be a little bit different. We are going to look a little bit more closely at this in the next section about tone, because I think this is something that we really need to think about right now. And then, you know, as we go, uh, we'll go up a little bit there and look at delivery. Maybe your offerings are exactly right. And it's the delivery that needs to change. For example, um, you know, I have a dance class that I take every week and we can't be physically in the room to take that class. And that class has shifted to Zoom. They are delivering it virtually now. We're doing the same, they're basically the same things, uh, maybe slightly modified the lessons, but we're all still able to collect. We're able to do that virtually. And then lastly, I want to talk a little bit about partnerships because I'm a big believer in partnership marketing. And I'm, what that means is finding allies. There may very well be people in this chat right now who could be allies for you in marketing your message. Um, and, you know, I'm going to tell you a little bit about a virtual summit that I'm creating for the middle of May to talk about small business recovery. And that for me, is me showing you what it looks like to partner with other businesses to try to all get your message out there at once. So I would say, you know, when you think about how you can still be noticed, how you can still have your signal go out there and, and boost that, find ways to collaborate with other businesses that have a similar target market to you, that you can just help each other boost each other's voice. This is so important right now and who you're partners could be might be changing because some of these other questions are changing at the same time. So those are a few things that I wanted to talk about. And I know that there are some questions coming in. So I'm really looking forward to taking those in a minute. I'll just wrap up this section by just saying that one of the things that shouldn't pivot is the core of your brand. When we talk about pivoting, you can pivot the things you do, but you don't necessarily pivot who you are. If you stay by your values, if you stay by your, the, if you stay by the basic essence of what people have gotten to know about who you are and how you're going to show up with them, you can change the other things and then change back. But if you change who you are, they won't know, they won't know what to do with that information. So I actually would encourage you, if this is something that you want to understand more about this, I created, a, every week I write a marketing tip. And um, last week, I believe I wrote this, this one about brand consistency versus pivoting. And there is a link to it at the bottom of this slide. I would encourage you to check this out. Um, the, the idea of what pivoting looks like and how that changes who you are and how that relates to consistency is a very complex one. And I constantly talk about the need for consistency in our marketing to really get into people's brains and make sure they know what, what they should expect from us and create that loyalty. Consistency is a little bit hard to come by right now. So there are things that can change and there are things that need to stay the same. And this blog really outlines that in a deeper way. But at the end of the day, if you think about what your value system is, Please hold true to that when you're getting in front of people. Your tone can shift, but how you're going to show up doesn't shift. 
if, you know, if I, if I think I want to come from a place of service, I'm going to find a way to come from, from a place of service in the different things that I'm offering right now, knowing that that core value is still the same. And if people can come to expect that from you, then it'll be so much easier for them to understand why they should do business with you, even if what you're offering is shifting a little bit. So I want to take this time and, and uh, address some of your questions. I'm just going to go back through because I've got a couple um, that came in a little bit earlier that I want to look at. But this is also a chance for you to really think related to your business, what actually needs to pivot right now? And I put that list of things that I had addressed up front in there. So just like, is there anything about what I'm offering that does need to shift? And if so, that's something for us all to look at. So, um, you know, I know that somebody asked early on, has, has anybody been able to identify new customers during this time? Um, so that is a question to everybody. Um, and if you have thoughts on that, please feel free to answer those in the chat. Um, uh, for me personally, by finding partnerships, I am able to actually reach some new audiences during this time. For me, it doesn't necessarily mean trying to sell services. It may mean putting out free information to those people with the hope that down the road, some of those people um, may become clients. For other people, you may be able to get in front of them with a, with a you know, something that they need to pay for. Uh, but partnering can actually be a really good way of uh, getting in front of those new audiences right now if you don't have an advertising budget. So that was a really good question. And for those who have uh, something to answer that question, uh, please feel free to do that in the chat. That's a great place to do it. Um, referrals are the best. I love that. Um, partnership marketing is my favorite. And then, you know, Dana, thank you for highlighting you would reach out to your referral sources and touch base with them during this time. And there may be an opportunity to make some new friends. Uh, people, you know, there may be people who you have developed relationships with before and they, they could still be relevant, but this could be the best time to build a new relationship for other businesses that maybe need that lifeline. You can all grow through this process together and build some really strong relationships that can serve you well. So definitely appreciate that comment. Um, let's see. I'm an esthetician and are in the beauty industry. I'm working on a new COVID-19 policy for my business. Has anyone been creating new guidelines to help encourage businesses while at the same time, oops, while at the same time trying to protect and keep as safe as possible. Um, so I want to put a pin in that one. Um, the last section here, I'm going to look at a couple of the policy pieces, and I would love for Dana to jump in when we get to that section um, to talk more about some of the other uh, impact, the other operational impacts or even maybe legal impacts around policies. Um, let's look at that again when we get to that section. And uh, yeah, Dana, I'd love for you to be ready to jump in and just share some more thoughts on the policy standpoint when we get there. Awesome. It's hard to monetize opportunities at the moment, so I agree that I've been focusing on building new relationships, but you have to have drive powder to fund most free consulting. Yeah, that is definitely a challenge right now, isn't it? Um, I, I think, you know, not everybody is in a position to offer things for free right now to try to build their list. If you are in that position, um, that's something that actually can really get you very far. I've seen, you know, some of the businesses that I've seen that have gotten the most love and the most media exposure and the most press are those who have offered something for free. Um, and they really came across as heroes to the community and they've built their list and they've built that loyalty. Um, that is not something that everybody is in a position to do right now, because at the end of the day, a lot of us need money. So, um, and, and so do your, you know, so does your mortgage and so does your landlord and, and then, you know, the grocery store is looking for that money when you want to pay for your food. So I get that piece. And I think if you're in that position, you honestly lean on those relationships that you've built, work hard to get your message out there with your current list and really be mindful of your tone in the process. It can be, it, it can be very difficult right now to get, um, if you're in an industry where people are being tighter with their finances, 
you really have to look for those ways to to massage that relationship and continue to get in front of them right now maybe create experiences out of what you're doing as much as you can and just get as creative as you can in this moment i'm just making sure i haven't missed anything here and dana if you have anything that you want to add as i'm looking through some of the comments feel free to jump in okay i think i have one that i missed here suggestions on what to do when over 70% of your client base is now closed. Melissa, mm -hmm. can I jump in for just a minute? Absolutely. Uh, you know, and I know that we have some questions coming in, which that's all good. Every industry is going to be very specific, just like you said earlier. And I just want to remind people sometimes, you know, even if you can't get your answer questions answered today, um or or as in detail as you need today i want to remind our our uh, attendees to you know make sure that they reach out back out to us and we can work with them individually and one-on-one -on -one to help them get that information um i remember i just wanted to share a story but um you know when i used to work for a financial advising firm you know we all worked on commission so it's not like that we had a paycheck coming in either and this was during normal times. Um, I knew exactly how much money I wanted to make. So therefore, I knew that it took seven no's to get to a yes when it um, pertains to marketing. And I'd have to reach out and touch an individual at least seven times before they actually might become a client. And that's just the system, right? So I want to remind everybody just because you reach out to one person one time doesn't mean that you, I mean, it doesn't mean that you stop there you have to have a repeat marketing plan because i may as a consumer i may not be ready for your services today and i may not be ready to buy your product today but what am i going to think about or what is the first person that's going to come to my mind when i need it somewhere down the road right so as a financial advisor, that's why I went and consistently got in front of people who kept telling me, no, no, not today. Maybe, oh, I got that covered, right? I don't need you today. You know, I'd hear all those objections. But in a matter of three years, I grew my practice from zero assets under management to 24 million. And that was all because I did not take no for an answer. So I want to remind people, even in this time, you do have customers out there. It may not be today, not be tomorrow. But you do have customers, and it's up to you to be resilient and very persistent in your marketing plan to get them coming your way eventually. I absolutely love that. I couldn't agree more. And in fact, and not that everybody is going to be in this situation, but um, you know, I told you that I do a marketing tip of the week. Every week I package it up, I put it into a newsletter, I send it out to my audience, and I have people who contact me and they say, I've been reading your newsletter for two years and I'm ready to work with you now. In an ordinary situation, I have people who have been who have received over a hundred blogs from me. <laughs> and then suddenly they're ready to work with me. They weren't ready two years ago. They needed to know that I'd still be there. And I think not every business needs to reach out to people 100 times, but some of yours might. And some of your clients might need to, or your customers might need to hear from you that much. And so I think it's about finding ways to keep that message going during this time. It's why it's so important for us to think about marketing right now, because you never know how many times it's going to take somebody in a, on a good day to be ready for what you're selling. So if you can stay in front of them now, that's all the more power to you when things are recovered, reopened, or maybe there are people right now who need what you sell. Um, it's just important to really get that information out there. I do want to shift over and take a closer look at this idea of tone, because there are a couple quick exercises that we can do together here that I think are going to help us for this. So when it comes to finding an appropriate tone, and a couple of the questions that I saw in the chat do hover around this area of how do you, how do you get this message out there? Um, so I have a simple exercise that we're going to do twice. 
And this is going to be something that um, I'm in on the next slide. I'm going to have a list of tone words and I want you to look through it and type into the chat. On a normal day, what kind of tone would you say that your business normally has? How would you normally speak to your audience? Three months ago, before any of this happened, how would you normally speak to your audience? So take a moment, look through these words, pick two or three that really resonate for you and type them in. If you don't see something that you want to write, write it anyway. Um, so I'll give you all just a couple, couple moments here to scan through that list and think on a normal day, how would I normally talk to my audience? What would the sound of my voice be for them? And as you have those, feel free to type in maybe two to three words, the, the you know, a couple that really jump out at you that that really jump to mind. And for me, I can tell you up front, this is going to be a couple words like maybe encouraging, um, informative. Those are a couple that really jump out to me. Um, okay, so we've got the first one here, soft but enthusiastic and optimistic. We've got somebody else saying conversational, enthusiastic, serious, professional. Always good to add the professional piece in there when you can. Informative. We've got somebody else saying candid, controversial, logical, intense. Ooh, it's a cool word to throw in there. I'd love to see how that comes across. Yeah, thanks. I know this is, it takes a little thinking on this one, but the ones that jump out to you, and so far we're doing a great job with this. I love it. a couple more seconds to look at this and feel free to type into the chat what comes up so like maybe two to three words concise we've got another one coming in there matter of fact direct i love it that gives me a really clear sense of how you come across great keep keep looking through this this is just on a normal day you know trustworthy that's a an important one for a lot of industries for sure great okay i appreciate your feedback on this if you're still taking a, a moment to look through feel free to do that um friendly professional that's another one that's coming up so you know my goal with this is just to sort of ground us in what a normal day would look like for you but we've talked a little bit already about how that sometimes we need to pivot in this moment so question becomes, is your normal tone, what you've been writing down just now, is that still right? Is it exactly right for this time? And again, we talked about the fact that the emotional state that people have is shifting very quickly. It's, it's, it is not static for, and this is about really getting a sense for your target market, like big picture, how can you figure out where they're at right now? For you, you know, could that be, uh, is it possible that your audience is feeling frustrated or scared or panicked or grieving? Maybe they're worried about their finances or they're concerned about their health. In Seattle, I would say people are starting to feel really fatigued, really antsy, lots of cabin fever. People are really starting to talk about what recovery looks like because we've been shut down for a month. Um, so I think is there some sort of change happening in the air and is your normal tone still right for this? So I wanna ask this question again, go back. I'm gonna go back to that same list of words. And I wanna ask you, in addition to however you normally talk to people, is there another word here that perhaps you need to layer on in this moment today, based on where you know your audience is at this moment? So you take your normal tones, that's great. We've already written those down. Is there anything here, any word here that you feel needs to be layered onto your normal tone based on what we're currently experiencing right now? So feel free to look back through, it's the same list of words, um, but if you feel there's something that needs to be added in, go ahead and type that into the chat too, and let's just see kind of where we land with this. So the first couple of words are upbeat and compassionate. Um, and just because somebody else wrote it doesn't mean you have to say that or feel that. This is, everybody has a different target market here. 
Um, but we've got upbeat, compassionate, got sympathetic, upbeat, diplomatic, casual, compassionate coming up again. Yeah, definitely hovering in on that word compassionate. We've got frank, logical, upbeat. Frank is a really interesting one in terms of just kind of like assessing honestly what the situation is. Encouraging. Yeah. And these words, um, you know, ensuring, I love that romantic. Oh, <laughs> maybe actually there, we say that jokingly, but I think there are some industries here who are probably doing pretty well. Um, so I would say, you know, take what you normally do. Ask yourself, is that exactly right? If it's not, maybe you need to layer one of these things in there for now. Um, it's something that you may need to look at some of your language and make sure, you know, these things that you're writing down, that becomes part of your story for this moment in time. And then when you think about how to, how to go back to normal, there needs to be an exit strategy too. But right now, this is what we're looking at in terms of what people need from us. So I love that. Thank you for doing that exercise with me. And I, you know, before we head into that last part about protocol, because I know somebody had a question about that earlier, Let's just ask any questions about the tone piece, because when you think about, I know everybody's got a different audience and that audience is in a different place right now, but um, you know, if you have any questions about tone and how you get that across in your message, this is a great time to ask them. Give me a couple moments to do that in case any questions do come in. I'm going to keep looking for that for any questions that might be coming in during this time, but I will shift into our last section here, which is very much tying into a question that came up earlier. Patrick, I'm going to put a little bit of a pin in the thoughts on getting ready for the reopen because I have something to tell you about um, at the end of this that that is very much related to that topic. So I'm going to put the word reopen at the top of my page to make sure that I tell you about it. Providing a sh and actually, to Patrick's question, this section kind of gets into that. So providing assurance in your marketing messaging, this is one that, um, you know, as we get to the end of this, Dana might want to jump in as well. <sighs> Look, there's what you're marketing, there's the message that you need to send, there's the thing that you're selling, and there's also this added layer of stuff that would normally be footnoted or fine printed that we kind of have to put on blast right now. There are two elements of this that I want to take a quick look at. One is health protocol and one is this idea of payment policies and refunds because um, health protocol, I think we've sort of desensitized ourselves like normally you wouldn't talk about this stuff, but we kind of have to right now. So when I think about what this looks like from your standpoint, first of all, from a marketing standpoint, you kind of have to be clear about who you're following for information. Um, in Washington state, we have slightly different health authorities than you might have in Louisiana. We'd still be looking at, to the CDC, but we locally, we have our state and we have, you know, the, the governing offices of our state that can give us information that we'll be tracking um, to monitor what the spread of COVID-19 looks like and what kind of recommendations they're making. So it really helps when you're thinking about how to get in front of the messaging to say, here's who we're looking to for guidance. We're following their policies and recommendations in creating the policies we, we needed for our business. And that's where we go to number two, operationally, that's when you have to determine, you know, get together with your team and figure out what do we actually have to do to stay in line with that. Step three is actually communicating the result of that. It's like a one plus one equals two situation. These are the people you're following. This is what you're gonna do in order to stay in line with their recommendations. And now you get to communicate that. Again, normally we would put this kind of thing in fine print. We wouldn't normally put it on blast. We don't normally talk about our cleaning procedures and the protocols that we put in place. Right now, that is information that may be reassuring for a percentage of your audience. And it's something that um, is a responsible thing to do. So it actually does become part of your marketing message. I want to talk for a second about payment policies and refund policies because it's sort of the same thing. There's an added layer I want you to think about. Operationally, and the SBDC will tell you this, you need to know your numbers. 
you have to figure out what you can actually do that will keep you in business. You want to come from a place of service to your clients. But if that sends you out of business, you really have to look at what the happy medium is there. So operationally, it's very important that you actually know what your numbers are right now. As a result of that, you then go about the process of making your own, you know, if there's payment required up front, well, how can you reassure people on that? I'm seeing a lot of book with confidence or register with, with confidence types of policies that, um, you know, you, what is refunds? What does that look like? People are really looking at that fine print very carefully before they make purchasing decisions. So if your business is one that could be impacted by this, it's something you really need to think about. But I wanna add a third step here. Please be mindful of your industry when you communicate your policies because what your business is able to do may not be what somebody else's business is able to do. And, you know, in Seattle, we got into real trouble. You know, events started to cancel. Um, and then it forced everybody into a spot in early March where they were all canceling and offering full refunds. And in a lot of cases, that has caused bankruptcy issues for event organizers here caused legal battles for some of those people here. And people started to bully saying, well, this business has done it, so we need a refund from you too. And you have to be really thoughtful. Okay, this is what I can do, but I will communicate that while being respectful to the fact that not everybody is gonna be in that position. You know, the tourism industry is really suffering right now. So if somebody offers you a refund, can they do it in a way that says, you know what, it's a tough time for refunds, but I am able to do this for you. Um, so I think that is something that will help us get this messaging and awareness out there for consumers to be knowledgeable that there is an impact on this that goes beyond the scope of themselves. And, um, you know, you try to come from a place of service and compassion, but also make sure they're aware of that to some degree, um, so that they, they don't just come to expect it from everybody. Um, we have really been conditioning ourselves to look for policies right now that we normally wouldn't. And this is something that is definitely worth exploring. I want to um, actually open that up to Dana to speak further on that, but I'm going to land on, you know, here's what we have talked about today. I'm going to land on this question slide because I want to take these last few minutes to talk about any questions that are coming up for you. Um, I want to give Dana a chance to talk about the policies if she wants to. You can type in any questions you have. And I'd also like to uh, very quickly address Patrick's question about the thoughts about getting ready to reopen. I am currently working on a basically a virtual summit. It's a webinar week for May 11th to 15th. I've got like 10 speakers at least confirmed so far. These are free webinars to, to attend, but it's all about the topic of small business recovery. So we're going to be looking at it from a variety of different angles, from functional areas of your business, you know, be it legal or or business consulting or financial, all the way to industry specific, whether that be restaurants or art or you know whatever whatever aspect you're looking to take uh, hold of. I'm having a whole week about uh, what recovery looks like for us. So if you want to know more about that. Um, shoot me an email at melissa at melissaforziatevents.com or, you know, check out my website and uh, find some of the great materials that are there. I've got a lot of information for you right now. So, but if you want to talk recovery specific, uh, shoot me an email at melissa at melissaforziatevents.com and I'll make sure to get you all of that information when I've released the details for webinar week. So I see Dana back on and I'm going to turn that back over to her for any, any thoughts. Okay, first of all, Melissa, can, uh, can you add that into the chat, your contact information for the callers that are, or um, uh, for the callers that may not know how to spell your name? Um, maybe slow down a little bit and spell your name, like Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, -S -S at Melissa, and then her last name is spelled F-O-R-C-I-A-T-E. C-E-N-T-S dot com. Actually, the events are going on. But um, and then obviously, if you shoot me an email, I will get you this information. But you had asked a question about policy. And I, I want to be very careful because on, honestly, 
we have not been given down any policies. And I know I've been trying to get out on every kind of call that I can and be a part of the webinar. And I know that the uh, Don Pearson, who is our Secretary of State uh, in Economic Development here, um, he's been very careful about not using the word policy, but using the word best practice. So, and until it might be a little early uh, to start calling them policies, because, you know, obviously we're only eight, maybe seven, eight weeks into all this. And it, you know, it takes a lot of time to do policy. So we want to call them best practices. I encourage whatever industry that our attendees in, please go to your industry association. For instance, you know, I'm a member of the CPA Society. I'm also a member of Economic Development um, Organization. So connect with those organizations that target your industry be on those calls because they are all sharing best practices for the purpose for the person that is actually in um, uh, you know, the beauty industry. I think it was Elizabeth uh, was making those comments that she's an esthetician. You know, I want to make sure that she's not only as um, being on the calls for your industry, but maybe link up with the Department of Health because they're the ones that are the regulating authority for her particular business. So I want to remind everybody, all the attendees, please link up with these um, various organizations. And for the nonprofit person that's on the call, I mean, did you know that we have a nonprofit association here in the state of Louisiana? So make sure that you look up those kind of things online and get connected with their webinars for those best practices that are in those industries. answer your question Liz, um, uh, Melissa yeah I think that's great I mean I I uh, having a knowledge of where to go to stay up with the times and stay protected and safe as a business owner um, as we get into because policies really sort of suggest that you're thinking about staying out there or you're thinking about reopening or recovering and and we have to do that safely in a lot of ways right now um, so it makes sense to really put that information uh, in a way that you know where you're looking for the information, that you can make good operational decisions, and then you can communicate it appropriately. Because again, this is stuff that would normally be fine print, but now it's becoming part of our marketing message. And you have to be really careful with that. Um, so I, I definitely appreciate those thoughts and looking to your association or other businesses like yours for that wisdom is paramount during this time it's a great time to partner with your competitors honestly right because you all need to find a way to stay safe and um and respectful and responsible during this time you know i was using the example of when i was a financial advisor do you know back in 2009 when the market dropped I went back and made all those calls to not only my clients first, but to my those people I had contact with that weren't my clients. And I asked them, have you heard from your financial advisor? They're like, no, but we'll keep that in mind because I'm here for you, right? So it's always the message. I'm always asking for the next order. I'm always asking for the business. So in your marketing plans and strategies, what is the call of action? I like to call the call of action, right? What is the call of action that you're leaving? Don't just call and talk to them and be social and buddy buddy and this and that. You can't do that. There's a reason why I'm calling, right? I want your business. And sometimes you've got to be aggressive enough to ask. I want your business. You got to tell them that. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but I do want your business. And I'm going to show you that I can deliver. So being aggressive is, is not a bad thing when it comes to marketing. There's a way when it's a nuisance versus asking for the order and just being aggressive about asking for it. Absolutely. And I know that we're, you know, we're we're out of time, uh, maybe a little bit over, and I appreciate those who have stayed on. There was one question that came in that I would like to take a moment to address with the event strategies to replace physical events. Um, 
First of all, uh, in the uh, webinar week that I talked about, um, I believe there is going to be somebody who's going to be specific to the networking and events industry. So you might want to check that out when it comes around because we'll talk about it in depth. But I think event strategies to replace physical events. The obvious thing to say here is virtual events, if that's something that you can do. In some cases, we need to slightly change how the event looks. Um, I've also seen people create movements, for example, um, one of my clients is the Washington State Convention Center. So they've gotten hit really, really hard with all of this. And right as we were starting to shut down, we were supposed to have Emerald City Comic Con. And Emerald City Comic Con is uh, an event that's really important for a lot of different businesses, not only the, the, the organizer themselves, but the panelists. And there was a whole artist alley full of artists who were going to sell work on commission. And they were going to line up commissions for the rest of the year at that event. So some really smart artists said, we need to shift this online. And they created hashtag artist alley online. And they all linked up together and spent the original days of the event, boosting each other, each other's voices online, even though they couldn't be there in person. And some of them got way more sales than they normally would have at the event because that they because they teamed up in this way and worked together. So taking it virtual can look a lot of different ways. And it's something to think about. The other thing you may want to think about is, um, is there a way that your specific kind of event can pivot into a membership group? Um, membership sites are something that exist and they are a way of sort of paying in a little bit of money for certain types of value each month. So this may be a time, depending on how regular your events were, that you could potentially look at uh, doing more of a membership site model um, around regular steady events. A lot of different ways to answer that question, depending on how your events normally look, but I think this is a time for creativity. Melissa, I want to thank you, and I'm so grateful and appreciative that um, you you came on today and uh, shared with us some of your tips for marketing, uh, especially during this time. And um, I'm sure you and I will be pop talking again. And but um, uh, just thank you so much for participating today, or or you know, and, and doing this for us. Thank you for having me and good luck to uh, good luck to all the businesses in Louisiana right now for just getting through this time. And I know it's really tricky. It's really tough. But, um, you know, the SBDC is such a great resource to lean on right now for all the wisdom that you need. Well, thank you. All right. Well, everyone, uh, this uh, completes our call for today. If you have any questions, please don't forget to email or contact us and we'll get back to you one on one. Thank you.